Okay, this is section 9.4, and this is on multiple regression. And what we're going to be doing here is adding more independent variables. On this problem, uh, we have number of absences as an independent variable, which we had before with the same data. We had that back in sections 9.1 through 9.3, the number of absences. And we have the Y variable, the uh, grade a person got on a test. And uh, but we added more independent variables, your placement test score, which is our second variable, X2. And we have each person's hours of doing homework per week, and that's their X3 variable. So what we want to do is get the uh, multiple regression line. It's going to have an X1, X2, and X3 with coefficients in front of it with a constant that's going to give you a predicted grade. So we take this data, and that data is on your uh, data sheet of the, of the Excel sheet, and um, uh, copy and paste it special into the multiple reg 3 sheet. The 3 here means that we have three independent variables. If you only had two independent variables, you would use this sheet, multiple reg 2. And if you just had one independent variable and one dependent variable, you would use uh, your reg core sheet that we used earlier. So this one has three independent variables, and I got the data there. And as soon as you put that data there, you get your equation uh, right here. It gives you your B sub 0, which is your constant, your B sub 1, which is right there, that's the coefficient in front of your X1 variable, which for this problem stands for number of absences, uh, your B sub 2, which is your coefficient in front of X2, which is your placement test score, and your B sub 3, which is your coefficient in front of the X3 variable, which is the out number of hours of doing homework. So that would be the equation, and uh, I have the equation written up for you here. Uh, right below, when you put that data in, those are your coefficients, and substituting in the 56 for your constant, the negative 2.84 for the, your B1, and so on, you get this equation. Now, sometimes you're just given an equation. If you're just given an equation, they tell you what X1, X2, and X3 stand for, then you have to just do that problem with a calculator and substitute in whatever they give you for X1, X2, and X3 and just work it out on a calculator. Take 56 minus 2.84 times whatever they say X1 is, or, you know, it's be some equation here, and you just substitute the values in, and it's as easy as that. Now, the coefficient determination for this model is going to be higher than what we have for just absences because uh, we have more variables here that, that – uh, give us a better prediction or a better understanding of what's going on. So the, when we just had absences in grade, your coefficient determination was 0.95. In other words, 95% of the variation in your grade is due to just absences alone. Well, this coefficient for this entire model here with these three variables is on the right-hand side. And on the right-hand side, if we scroll down just a little bit right here, and uh, is your R squared for the model. That's the one you use. You don't need to use this adjusted R squared. So about 99.24% of the variability in data points can be attributed to number of absences, uh, your placement test score, and the hours of doing homework per, uh, per week. Okay, let's see what else we got here. And... Um, Looking at uh, the other questions on this, and so that's your 99% that we're talking about. 99% of the of the variation in your one variable in your grades is due to uh, the three variables that we're dealing with. Um, now let's compare some uh, situations here. It says April is never absent, so that means her X1 is zero. She studies for three hours per week. That's your X3. X3 was the number of hours per week that she studies and has a placement test of 54. Well, let's get April's predicted um, uh, grade. So right up here on the right-hand side of the sheet is a place where you can put in X1, X2, and X3. And this was April, who uh, never misses class studies for three hours per week, that's her X3, and has a placement test of 54. What's her predicted score? A 100. Perfect. And you can get a prediction interval, put in the level that you want, whether it be 90, 95, or 99% confidence level here that you want, and you get your margin of error right here, and here's your prediction interval. In other words, uh, we're 95% sure that April, or a person like April that has this, this data right here, uh, never misses, has, uh, uh, does three hours worth of homework a week, and uh, has a 54 on the placement test. According to this data, she should get somewhere, well, she should get an A, 90 to 111.56. Now, the other person that we're comparing this to is Bev, and Bev 
never does her homework, so her X3 is 0. She's missed 7 classes, so her X1 is 7, and her placement test score is 74. So if I put this information in here, never does her homework, that's 0 right here, 7 absences, and she has a 74 on the placement test. What's her predicted score? Only a 75. So even though she has a higher placement test, her other actions are causing her score to uh, go down to a 75. 95% prediction interval for her score is a huge margin of error right there. And so we're 95% sure that she's going to get somewhere between a high F, almost the D here, 59.67% to a low A. So it's a large margin of error and also our sample size is very small and that also has a lot to do with why that uh, variable is so, um, you know, that margin of error is so high. Now, sometimes you're asked, what all are all the components of this regression equation needed? Well, the constant will always keep, but do you need this variable, this variable, and this variable, or are some of these variables not really giving you any more information? And that's what, um, and that's the prediction interval for both people. But uh, now we're going to check each one of these things, and this starts right here. Check the constant in each of the coefficients to see if they are significant, and if they are significant, in what direction are they significant, and at what alpha level. Okay, so we'll check each one of these, B sub 0, all the way through B3, and see which one is, or see if all of them or which ones of these are uh, important. When checking through, if you see a reject the null hypothesis, and you could make this as high as 0.1 alpha level if you want to see if they're significant anywhere. If you get a reject the null hypothesis, it's significant. Well, just is the model significant? Yep, it is. Uh, what's the p-value? 0.001, so clear down to the 0.01 alpha level, the model is significant. So this model is a good model of predicting things. Uh, now, is the constant significant? Well, looking at the p-value, this uh, uh, p-value here is, uh, let's see, 0.02 here for the right tail test. So that's a significant variable. At the uh, 0.05 alpha level, we could say that uh, your constant is significantly positive. So you're going to keep your constant anyway. But let's go to the B1. The B1 is a coefficient in front of your X1 variable, and X1 stood for your number of absences. And we can see that we reject the null hypothesis on the left tail test, meaning that that's an important variable that you'd want to keep in this model. In other words, the more that you miss class, the lower your grade is. And, and we're sure about that at the point oh, let's see, we could take this down to about the point oh five alpha level. So we're sure about that variable. What about placement test score? Well, we get reject the null hypothesis on that too on a right tail test. So the higher your placement test score, the higher your grade is, is expected to be. It's a significant variable. You want to keep it. And it's significant at the 0.05 alpha level because you can go down to 0.05 and, and, uh, as an alpha in this p-value will still be less than that. Now your uh, B3, which is your coefficient in front of X3, and X3 stood for the uh, number of hours you do homework per week. You see, do not reject the null hypothesis, and we checked it at the least significant alpha level of 0.1. Checking all these p-values here for the two-tail, right-tail, and left-tail test, all of them are greater than 0.1, meaning that this is not a significant variable. So to tell you the truth, you really aren't getting anything much out of including this variable in your regression equation. So if I use this, so what variables are important? Well, your number of absences and your placement test score is important, but this variable right here, the number of hours of doing homework per week, is not an important variable. Now, there's a place right over here, let me scroll up here, where it tells you the correlation between each of these variables. And the reason why X3 is, uh, in terms of number of hours doing homework is not an important variable, is this. Even though if we looked at it by itself, x3 with y, it gives you a correlation coefficient of 0.86, and it would be significant if we just checked that by itself. There's a, there is a strong negative relationship between x1 and x3. x1 was the number of absences, and x3 is the hours of doing homework. And it's very strong negative relationship, very close to negative 1. And since this number here, the relationship between x1 and x3 is either very strong, close to negative 1, or very close to positive 1, that means we're not getting any extra information from x3 variable. So, in other words, the same people that are 
uh, not coming to class are the same people that aren't doing their homework. So we're really not getting any new information. See, looking at, at placement tests, that correlation is very small, low, really, 0.37. But that's a keeper. That's one you want to keep as placement tests because that's giving you some new information. X3 is not, even though its correlation with uh, the uh, dependent variable, your score is a uh, high uh, correlation. Okay, even though this one's lower, placement test score, you keep it and you don't keep this one. See, looking at relationship between X2 and X1, it's low, and X2 and X3, it's low. But X1 and X3 is high, meaning you're not getting any more information from X3.